So this is my quick review series on fractions. And this is part one, so we're gonna talk about simplifying mixed numbers and improper fractions. So fractions actually I find in math are one of the most commonly forgotten topics. Um, it's usually something that people learn when they're younger and then they just naturally forget it and then it just becomes a thorn in their side. So if you are somebody that says, I hate fractions, this is the perfect series for you. Just a heads up, I designed this review series to help you review for a math placement exam like Alex, but you can use it as a quick review if you forgot just that particular topic in your math class. Um, so just FYI, I sometimes talk about Alex. You can just ignore that if you're not using this for the Alex placement exam. And just a heads up, my fraction series has three videos in it. So I highly recommend that if you hate fractions, watch all three and this will completely rebuild your foundation and hopefully put you in a much better spot with fractions. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's talk about fractions 101. So here I have four fifths. Okay, so the four is what we call the numerator. You can remember that as numerator north and five is in the bottom. That's the denominator, denominator down. So numerator north, denominator down. And couple terms related to fractions that we're going to talk about more in this video and future videos is the mixed number. So the mixed number would look like this. So I have like a integer here, so a whole number, and then a fraction attached to it. This is what makes something a mixed number versus having a improper fraction. So an improper fraction would look like seven over three. So for an improper fraction, the thing about it is that the numerator, the top part has to be bigger than the denominator, the bottom part. And so it's very common for you to have to flip between these two forms. So I wanted to make sure that we're comfortable moving between these two forms before I start throwing a bunch of different types of fraction operations at you. So now let's talk about simplifying fractions. So just making sure that we're good on this. So I've got this fraction 15 over 25. So when you want to simplify a fraction, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the top and the bottom and you're going to just think, what is the first number that pops into your head that these two numbers are divisible by? Now, ideally, you also want to think of what's the largest number that these two things are divisible by, but sometimes that doesn't always happen. So at least just start with the first number that pops into your head. Now, since both of these end in a five, I can tell just by looking at it that both of these are divisible by five. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide the top and bottom by five. 15 divided by five is three. 25 divided by five is five. So this whole thing will simplify to three fifths. And so that's really it for simplifying fractions. But what I wanna do now is I just wanna pivot to another situation that is maybe a little trickier. So now I've got 60 over 150. So in this case, maybe you're looking at this and you and I might say two different numbers for what we think of first of how to di what divides into 60 and 150. So I'm just going to kind of now run you through what happens if you choose a different number. So let's say that I am going to divide the top and bottom by 10. So I notice that both of these end in zero. I know that these are both divisible by 10. So that's where I'm going to start. So with simplifying fractions, the nice thing with this is that like if you have to do this in multiple steps, that's not a problem. So I divide the top and bottom by 10 and I get 6 over 15. The thing that you want to do when you're simplifying fractions is that then you want to ask yourself, could you divide these by anything else? So now I've got 6 over 15 and I notice now that I could divide the top and bottom by 3. And if I divide the top and bottom by 3, I will now be left with 2 fifths. And this is as far as I can simplify this fraction. So what I'm saying is you might end up going in a few steps to get to the final answer. And that's totally fine on the Alex math placement exam. You don't have to do it perfectly in one go. You just have to figure out how to simplify. Okay. So just to check how you're doing with this, I have two examples here. Um, just as a reminder, all of these problems can be found in my free notes and practice sheets on dividingconquermath.com. So you can actually work alongside this video with the notes and it just makes the video feel a little bit more interactive. So I'm going to say this a billion times, but math is not a spectator sport. Watching me do problems 300 times perfectly is not going to help you learn the material or get better for the placement exam. It's really important at this point, you pause the video, try these two, even if you get them wrong, that's totally fine, but hit play when you're ready. Okay, so now looking at these, um, so I've got 90 over 144. So 
what is, what, what could I divide these by? First number that jumps out to me, these are both even numbers, so since they're both even, I can divide them by two. So this becomes 45 over 72. And now that I've div divided the top and bottom by two, um, I notice that I can divide these by nine, and this becomes five over eight. Now, before I move on, I actually wanna tell you a cute little party trick that would have helped with this problem. Um, if you're struggling with what to divide the top and bottom by, another trick that you can use is that you can add the digits of a number up. So for 90, that would be nine plus zero, and that equals nine. And for 144, that's one plus four plus four, that also equals nine. So here's the cool trick. If the digits, so when you sum up the digits, if this sum is divisible by nine, the entire number is divisible by nine. It's kind of a crazy property, um, and it, it's like from like number theory, but just random trivia for you. But yeah, so if you're kind of struggling on what to divide by, if this number is divisible by nine, you can divide this by nine. The same trick works for if this is divisible by three. So this only works for threes and nines, but if that's true, then that's another thing that you can divide by. And as we can see, right, obviously at some point I divided by nine, so I could have started this out by dividing by nine. So um, if we look in the next one, so if I take five plus six, so five plus six equals 11, that's not divisible by nine. So 56 is not divisible by nine. But seven plus two equals nine, so that would be divisible by nine. So just showing you a little bit of like how that trick works. Okay, so anyways, um, so now moving on to B, let's see. I know that the top and bottom are divisible by eight. You may have chosen a different number and that's totally fine if you did. But in the end, what you should have gotten was seven over nine. That should have been the final answer. So if you took a couple steps to get there, that's not a problem. Okay, the next thing that I wanna talk about is how to write an improper fraction as a mixed number. So sometimes you have to convert between these two forms, so it's good to practice this a little. So let's say that I've got 55 over 10. So the easiest way to do this actually is to first just reduce the fraction as much as you can. So I've got 55 over 10, so I can tell right away just by looking at this that I can divide the top and bottom by five. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that so I get 11 over two. So now that I'm here, I need to write this as a mixed number. And by reducing this, you're actually gonna make the, the load much easier for this. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna set up a long division problem. So I'm gonna set the two here and the 11 here. So the two, the bottom number always goes on the outside, the top number always goes in on the inside. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna say, how many times does two go into 11 without going over 11? So that would be five, because two times five is 10. So now, since two times five is 10, I can subtract off the 10, and I'm left with this one. So this is technically a remainder. But this is also what we're going to use for our mixed number. So in the end, that, um, that five, so let's see, that five comes from here. And then the attached fraction comes from these two pieces here. So this will be one over two, and that comes from the division. And so that's gonna be your easiest way to reduce these types of situations. So let's try this again with 126 over 56. So once again, the first thing I wanna do is just reduce this as much as possible. And in looking at this, um, the first thing that comes to mind is that I could at least divide the top and bottom by two. So I guess I'll start there. And so let's see, that'll be 63 over 28. And okay, so now I notice that 63 and 28 are both divisible by seven. So 63 divided by seven is nine, 27 or 28 divided by seven is four. And now this is as far as I can take this, right? But now I can go ahead and write my mixed number. So I'm gonna have the four here and the nine here. How many times does four evenly go into nine? Twice. Two times four is eight, so subtract off the eight and I get a remainder of one. And so now the number that goes on the um, outside is two and then we'll have one over four. So I take 
that remainder, put it over the divisor. So two and one fourth will be the final mixed number. Okay, cool. So now why don't you try these two just to make sure you've got it. Um, so give them a go. Even if you make a mistake, it's fine. You can see how it's done once you press play. I'll see you in a second. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and divide the top and bottom here by 10. So I have 21 over 12, and I notice that I can keep reducing this. So I'm gonna divide the top and bottom by three, and I get seven over four. So now I've taken this as far as I possibly can. So if I think about this, how many times does four evenly go into seven? Once, subtract off the four, I get a remainder of three, so that's gonna be the numerator. So seven over four will be equivalent to one, will be equivalent to one and three over four. Cool. So what about 125 over 24? Now, sometimes if you're not sure what number divides into something, this might be one where you might look at it and first think, I'm not sure. You can always try something. So it's definitely not gonna be divisible by two because they're not even numbers. So, you know, if you're kind of at a loss, um, some of that is just getting back into doing hand calculations. And so then don't be afraid to just like throw out a number, right? So I'm gonna try dividing the top and bottom by three. And if I divide the top and bottom by three, so I know that 24 divided by three is eight, but 125 divided by three, like if you have to just spend a second to just do a few hand calculations. So I can see here, so let's see, I'll subtract off the 12 bring down the five. So three does not go into this evenly. So we are looking to not have a remainder. So like sometimes when you're doing this, it is normal to have to actually just sit there and, and play around with it and do a few hand calculations. So it might be really frustrating at first when you're getting back into this, like, oh, I don't remember. But some of that will just come back to you over time. So I just wanna throw out that, that caution, I guess. So the thing about this particular problem actually is if you play around with it a little bit you might actually find or realize so these have no common factors the reason why is actually a byproduct of their prime factorizations what does that mean so the only made the only way to make 125 is 5 times 5 times 5 and the only the ways to make 24 would be like 3 times 8 so if you think about like how you have to multiply these numbers together, you can see by writing out like how these are multiplied together that these clearly have nothing in common. So, you know, I'm bringing this up because I think this is a really good example that can get really frustrating. You might look at these and say like, oh, I, I can divide these and then you're just kind of hitting a brick wall. If that happens, think about what you would do to multiply to those numbers and you might see why it is that you're not finding a number. So like here now there's no common factors. So I feel confident now that I, I can't actually reduce this. So that's totally fine. But um, just cause I can't simplify the fraction doesn't mean I can't write this as a mixed number, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna think about how many times does 24 go into 125? And okay, so again, um, you can also kind of leverage just what you know about multiplication. So if I think about like, how would I get to 25? Uh, how would I get to 25 to 125? That would be times five. So how many times will 24 go into 125? Well, if 25 times five is 125, then 24 can go into 125 five times, right? So these are like little tricks that you can think about um, if you get frustrated with some of the hand calculations. I don't know if that's like helpful to hear or not. If you find that helpful, uh, you could leave me a comment letting me know. So, okay, so now I've got five times 124. So five times 124 is 120. And remember, you could break that up as 20 times five and four times five. So 20 times five is 100, four times five is 20. So that's another way that you can break that up. So just trying to review all those tricky hand calculations. Okay, cool. So anyways, um, so now I'm gonna subtract off the 120. I'm left with the remainder of five. So my mixed number will be five and five over 24. Kind of a weird mixed number, but that's as far as it goes. So we're good to go. So the good news is, going the other direction is actually much simpler. 
So if I want to convert the mixed number 4 and 2 thirds back to an improper fraction, to do that what I'm going to do is, so you start with the number, the number in front and the denominator. So it's going to be 4 times 3. And then you add the numerator. So this is going to be 12 plus 2 equals 14. So what do you do with that 14? You put it on top of whatever the original denominator was. So this will be 14 over 3, and we've done it. We've converted it to an improper fraction. Okay, so let's do that one more time. Actually, why don't you try it real quick just to make sure that you've got it. Pause here, give it a try, hit play when you're ready. So I'm going to take 3 times 7, so 3 times the, three times the denominator plus 4. So that's 21 plus 4, so that equals 25. So my improper fraction will be 25 over 7. Okay, so the other case that I want to talk about is what happens when you have a negative number. So the thing that can be a little tricky about this is that that negative, let's see if I can draw this properly. So you actually want to ignore the negative until the very end. So let's compare the two different ways that I could do this. So if I just take 2 and 5 ninths and convert that to a improper fraction, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 2 times 9 plus 5. So that's 18 plus 5, so that equals 23. So I'm going to rewrite this as 23 over 9, and then, boom, I'm going to put that negative in front. Now, why does this matter? Why can't I just bring the negative with in this set of calculations? So I just want to show you what happens. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to do this in this other color. Just This is wrong, OK? So if I rewrite this as negative 2 times 9 plus 5, so look what happens. I get um, that this is negative 18 plus 5, and that equals negative 13. So this is a totally different number, right? And also, this number doesn't make sense. So if I rewrite this as negative 13 over 9, so you have to think about this for a second, right? But how many times does 9 go into 13? It only goes into 13 once, right? But notice, for this mixed number, you need a 2 here, right? So these two are clearly not equivalent. So you don't want to have that negative in front when you are when you are doing this. So we're just going to cancel this out entirely. OK, so just to make sure that you've got it, I've got one more here. You can pause the video and just make sure you've got it. Hit play when you're ready. So I'm going to take 4 times 6 plus 5. So that's 24 plus 5, so that equals 29. So this will be negative 29 over 6. And again, if I just do that quick gut check, 6 goes into 29 for sure four times. So we're good to go there. OK, so that brings us to the end of this video. Just as a reminder, you can't master math by watching a ton of YouTube videos. You do have to actually practice. So every review video that I have in this series has a companion additional practice problem set. So you get a PDF of problems with an answer key and then also a video showing you how to work any of those problems. So just to make sure that you understand this topic, I strongly recommend that you test yourself and, and check out those materials. All of this is available for free at divideandconquermath.com and then you can go to the review section. Also, as a reminder, my fraction series has three parts to it. So if you hate fractions, I find that very often when students hate fractions, it's just that they forgot a lot of things with it because it's actually a very complicated topic. So I strongly recommend that you watch each one of these review videos and do the practice problem set associated with it just to rebuild that foundation. By the way, I have a whole review series with other topics beyond fractions. So each topic is just like what it was here. It's got a refresher video, practice problems, answer key, and then extra videos with worked out solutions for the answer key. So everything's kind of there for you. Everything is free and at Divide and Conquer Math. So just go to that review section and it's all good. I have everything really that is at the moment, at the time I'm making this video, I've created a lot of resources that cover algebra topics, uh, just really common things that people would need to know for either a placement exam or another class, so you can really use it as, as you need. So pretty please, if you would consider liking this video, leaving a comment, subscribing, or telling your friends. I'm really trying to grow this channel, and I super appreciate when you guys do that. Okay, guys, so I will talk to you in another video, I hope. Peace.